Sepia Talk Adventures of the Ponyville Clockmaker Written by Canvas Wolfdoll Chapter 9 Mr. Talk and His Life a crowd was beginning to build in front of the town hall, whispering among themselves about the ceremony. Behind the curtain, Colgate was fretting over Sepia's tie. Are you sure about this one? she asked. I still have time to go grab a necktie. I feel no shame in bow ties, Sepia said. They're fancy, fun, and they don't get caught in things. Colgate rolled her eyes as she straightened the piece of neck decoration. If you say so, it's your celebration. Yes, Sepia said. Yes, it is. It's pretty nice being celebrated for what I've actually done. The mayor took her position at the podium. Phillies and gentle colts. Today we honor another of our brave citizens with the prized Pony of Ponyville Award. This elicited cheers and stomping. This pony has been a long time benefit to our society, keeping our everyday lives functioning in subtle ways. If it weren't for him, our fair town would have descended into chaos long ago. Sepia nodded to this. He always thought clocks were important, and it was nice to hear it acknowledged. More recently, his brave actions have brought down a terrible threat and restored our town to its timely state. I speak, of course, of Dr. Hoof. Sepia Talk and Colgate, in unspoken agreement, walked away, abandoning the celebration. Should we leave a note? Colgate asked as they trotted off. As many times as we've done these events, when was the last time any pony was behind a curtain? Sepia answered. Very used to it. They ignored the cries of confusion when the curtains finally opened and went to the store where a few contracted ponies were putting the finishing touches in place including hanging a sign reading Sepia Talks Clock Shop. At least the community paid to rebuild the shop, Sepia remarked. I'm going to miss that old sales counter and desk, though. No, oh, it wasn't that great. You've got a real sales counter now, with a safe, Colgate said. Anyway, we should probably get to work on restocking and fixing the salvage clocks. Sepia followed Colgate into the new store. It was expanded a little, now taking up the entire first floor, with the shelves now built into the walls. The kitchen had been moved upstairs into Sepia's living space, and the workshop into a newly built basement with a safe storage area for fuel tanks. Currently, the salvage stock was piled against a far wall of the workshop. Sepia rubbed his hooves together. All right, then. Where should we start? he asked cheerfully. Colgate looked at the pile and removed the clock. How about this one? Sepia sighed upon realizing what it was. How long ago did I say I was going to fix that? he asked. Colgate did some quick calculations and then reported, A month, I think. Well, bring it over here, Sepia said. I'm still going to charge her full price. I did save the world and all. As is your right, Colgate said. Sepia studied the clock carefully. Well, replace the scratched cover, double-check the functionality, and I think it's good to go. He pointed at a pile of clocks that were beyond repair, but still could be cannibalized for parts. See if you can find a glass cover over there, and I'll check the spring, he told his assistant. How big? Colgate asked, looking at the pile. Sepia grabbed a ruler, laying it by the clock. Thirty centimeters, he answered. Colgate found a cover the correct size, unscrewed it from the clock, and passed it to Sepia. This work? 
Sepia compared it to the face, then unscrewed the hinges of the old cover and replaced it with the new one. It's perfect, thanks. I'll just start on another then, Colgate said, going back to the to-be-refurbished pile. Sepia finished checking the clockwork and then placed it in a saddlebag that he then donned. I'll go see if the mayor is ready to receive the clock then. Colgate waved him off. I'll be here. Excuse me, mayor. You in? Sepia called into the office as he peeked in the door. Oh, doctor, it's good to see you. You missed your award ceremony, the mayor said from behind her desk. It's Sepia talk, Sepia corrected her. Anyways, I've got your clock. Sorry it took so long to get it back to you. Why, thank you, the mayor said, taking the clock and hanging it on his hook. How much do I owe you? For time and parts, about ten bits, Sepia answered. The mayor considered the price. You did take a whole month to return it to me. I'm sorry, I was a bit busy with, you know, the time bubbles and related chaos, Sepia answered. So, ten bits. The mayor conceded and retrieved the money, which Sepia happily accepted. He turned and left the building and began his walk back to the shop. There he is! Did you hear how he saved the day last time? The Pegasus was completely loco! The food in the fridge is for me. Please stop stealing it. Crixie is apparently one of the doctor's companions now. How cool is that? Burnt the entire place to the ground. It's a good thing we have Dr. Hoof around. Sepia just had to smile for himself. Sure, they still hadn't gotten his name right, but at least the story was actually his this time around. Colgate, Sepia called when he entered the store. Yes, Sepia, Colgate pranced down the stairs, levitating a plate holding a slice of cake. Where did this new door come from, Sepia asked. And why do we now have guards? Oh, it was a gift. Luna brought it over, Colgate answered. She also brought some cake. Want some? Sepia gave the door an appraising look. Nah, that's okay. He closed the door. Anyways, how many clocks do we have left to Princess Luna is here? Princess Luna walked down the stairs. Oh, Sepia, there you are. We cut into the cake without you, I'm afraid. I hope that's okay. Good day, Princess, Sepia greeted. That's all right about the cake, thanks. Thanks for the door too, I guess. Luna smiled. I thought it would be a fun little addition to the store. It's certainly an addition, Sepia replied, and walked over to the safe, turning the dial to unlock it. Anyways, while you're here, I might as well give you these. He pulled out a metal box and key, placing them on a the counter. I know you said you and Celestia couldn't come in direct contact with the watch, but I thought putting it in some sort of container would help. Then, for extra security, I designed the lock myself. Integrated clock components, so it won't open until an hour after you turn it with a key. I hope that's okay. Luna looked pleased, if a little confused. Oh yes, that's a brilliant idea, but... Are you sure you don't want to keep the watch yourself? Sepia shrugged. What am I going to do with it? I'm not a time traveler. I'm more than happy with the present. He looked longingly at the box. Though, I do admit, I wonder about its construction. I can tell a true lover of the craft built it. Why else would he make the cogwork viewable for the face? Ah, Sepia got a distant look in his eye. It would be nice to know how one makes the perfect watch. We can certainly let you study it for a while, Luna suggested. Yeah, Sepia shook his head. Then what, he said. I'd know how to construct a perfect clock, sure, but then all the mystery is gone. I'd have nothing left to strive for. He pushed the box towards Luna. So, no... I don't want it. 
You and your sister better keep it. Colgate slid over to Sepia. Are you sure? I mean, come on. All of time in your hooves. Think of the adventures. Sepia gave Colgate a look. I don't want adventures, Colgate. I'm still reeling from the last one. More would just be a headache. Luna smiled. I figured as much. That's why I wanted you to retrieve it. Luna picked up the box and key. Any other pony would just abuse the power. I knew I could trust you not to exploit the opportunity. You're just too boring. <laughs> she smiled happily. Anyways, the ponies of Equestria thank you for your service. If there's ever anything we can do for you, don't be afraid to ask. If I ever need anything, I'll just add it to the letter, Sepia answered, diplomatically ignoring the bit about him being boring. Anything I can do for you, princess? Luna thought for a moment. Well, Felicity has been wondering what you've been up to, she said. I'll be sure to attend your next tea party. Just send an invite, Sepia answered. I'll even drag Colgate along if you like. Luna clapped her hooves. Oh, that would be great. The more the merrier. She calmed to a simple smile. Well, until next time, Sepia talk. Luna and her guards left for Canterlot. A tea party with Princess Luna, Colgate said distantly after a time. What should I wear? I'm sure anything or nothing will be fine, Sepia answered, transferring some of the more valuable items into the safe, just as long as you're polite and aren't rude to the socks. Socks? Colgate echoed worriedly. Sepia gave his assistant a reassuring pat on the head. You'll do fine. Don't worry. He then gave her a taunting grin. I could probably even have Luna invite Soren if you'd like. Stop teasing me, Colgate said with a giggle. I will, if you promise never to drag me to another Dr. Hoof show, Sepia bartered. No deal, Colgate answered defiantly. Well, there you go, Sepia said. I'll invite him anyways. Probably should also get Trixie an invite too, Sepia continued with a thoughtful smile, then shook his head and snapped back to the present. Now, let's go fix some clocks. We have a business to reestablish. They began to work, rotating clock crafting duties and store minding. The store wasn't exactly busy, so minding the store wasn't very thrilling, and Sepia made a note to set up some kind of system to alert him to arriving customers while in the workshop. Wouldn't be too hard, he figured. Just set up some sort of pulley system and attach it to a bell in the basement. Hey, Sepia! Colgate's voice pulled him from his wandering thoughts. Sepia craned his neck to look down the stairs. Yes? What are we going to do about our glasses? Colgate asked. Ah, Sepia groaned. The machine needed serious repairs, but he couldn't exclude the signature product of his store. Have I ever taught you the old pipe and furnace method? Sepia asked. No, Colgate answered. Remind me to do that after closing time, Sepia replied. I should have the old pipe around somewhere. Okay, thanks, Colgate called up. I'll get back to the clocks now. Sepia went back to daydreaming behind the sales counter. He had lost many things in the struggle. However, they were replaceable, for the most part. The hourglass machine just needed some replacement parts here and there, and he didn't have too many nostalgic possessions. However, the records he owned were utterly destroyed. That honestly did bug him. He was fond of the small collection he'd acquired over the years. Oh well, he'd just have to start from the beginning, see if he could replace his prized recording of Octavia's first solo performance. He sighed. It had been so hard to find one the first time. Colgate levitated a box of repaired clocks into the store. Where should I put these? she asked. Ah, Sepia shrugged. Wherever, I guess. Doesn't matter that much. 
Colgate took her box over to an empty shelf and started setting the clocks up for display. I'm sure business will pick up eventually, she reassured the clockmaker. I'm sure it will, Sepia said with a yawn. Hey, did the contractor remember to install a full height shelf for the toys? Uh, Colgate looked around briefly. Yes, over there, she said, indicating the shelf. And the new window sill should be able to hold some. Good, good, Sepia said, knocking under the table to grab the beat-up box containing the various tin trinkets, shuffling through it. The door opened, and a gray earth pony entered. Excuse me, she said. Is there a Sepia talk here? Colgate desperately tried to stifle a laugh. Yes, I'm down here. Sepia waved a hoof from behind the counter. Heavy box, weak neck. What can I get for you? Well, I need a new metronome, and a friend of mine recommends your work very highly, the customer said. He said you don't make metronomes normally, but you might, if I ask nicely enough. Sepia got the box on top of the counter. Metronome, he said. Sure, I could make you one. Just give me a day or egad, you're Octavia! Sepia's eyes went wide. You're Octavia, and you're in my shop! Sepia failed to keep a pitch change out of his voice. Octavia gave Sepia a sweet smile. Yes, that's me. She looked around the shop. Beautiful clocks you've got. Sepia tried to find words, but came up short, settling on an awkward, thank you. I also like the bow tie, Octavia added. Sepia instinctively tried to look at the tie. Oh, yes, he said, trying to recover from the slight blunder. I was at a ceremony earlier, forgot to take it off. Uh, Sepia shouldered the box and carried it over to the low shelf, setting it down. Anyways, I'd be very happy to make that metronome. I should have it completed by the end of the week, so you can come by Friday to pick it up. Or I could mail it to you, whichever is more convenient. I'd be more than happy to pick it up myself, Octavia answered. How much will I owe you? Well, I've never made a metronome before, so I'd say the experience is payment enough, Sepia answered. Oh, I can't accept that, Octavia said. You deserve payment for your work. Sepia's eye began to twitch as his mental faculties began to overload with excitement. Colgate stepped in. Tell you what, the unicorn said. We're still rebuilding from an awful fire last week. Would you happen to have any recordings of one of your performances lying around? Oh yes, certainly, Octavia answered. Anyone in particular? Colgate needs Sepia. Your first solo one, Sepia spouted out, then recovered. I, uh, lost my copy in the fire, and it was hard to find the first time around. You sure? Octavia said. It wasn't that good. I mean, I made a whole lot of mistakes all over the place. I still like it, Sepia said weakly. Octavia smiled again. Well, tell you what, I'll bring a copy of my first solo performance and an advanced copy of my next recording. She extended her hoof. Sound fair? Sepia shook the hoof excitedly, barely hiding his ecstatic grin. Oh, yes, that would be perfect. Octavia carefully removed her hoof. Then we have a deal. She locked at the door. If you don't mind me asking, what's with the door? It's blue and has weird signs all over it. It's an inside joke between me and a friend, Sepia answered. Sounds fun, Octavia said as she stepped through the exit, then stopped and turned around. Oh yes, and Soren told me to make sure to taunt you about something. She placed her hoof on her chin, feigning forgetfulness. But I can't seem to recall what. Oh well, see you Friday, Doctor. Sepia sat in awed silence. A huge smile grew on his face and he turned to his assistant. That was Octavia. Octavia visited my shop. 
Yes, I know. I was there, Colgate answered with a whimsical smile. And she wants me to make her a metronome. How do I make a metronome? Probably should go look that up. Uh, Sepia looked at Colgate again. Can you mind the shop while I make a quick trip to the library? I can manage. Sepia set his fangs and trotted off to the library. Friday came very fast, and Octavia returned to the shop, carrying a cello and the promised records cover signed. Colgate was mining the sales counter. Is my new metronome ready yet? Octavia asked. Yes, Sepia has got it downstairs, Colgate answered. Would you two mind terribly if I tried first? Octavia asked, motioning to the cello case strapped to her back. Colgate waved her towards the basement stairs. Go right ahead. Octavia went down the stairs and found Sepia working on a new clock. Three hourglasses were standing nearby, filling with sand. She wordlessly went to the workbench, placed the records down besides the clockmaker, and started the gentle beat of the metronome. She took her cello and bow and began to play. Sepia smiled to himself as he silently slotted a cog into place. Time seemed to slow as the two artisans worked in the basement. V. End.